but it will save us a fair amount of money. We can't do it this turn, but that's all right. Um, do I want to add something in? Import tariffs? No, that doesn't sound very capitalist. -y. It sounds very conservative, like actual conservative, but not capitalist. Um, welfare fraud department. Maybe we should do that. Clearly, people are ripping us off, right? Um, so it's entirely possible here that the costs will actually outweigh the income that we get. People seem to like it. There's a lot of popularity, potentially, with uh, uh, voters. Rent control, food stamps, all very popular. Rent control is actually really cheap for us to implement. will reduce homelessness considerably. Really, it's so cheap for us to implement. I'm betting there's someone who doesn't like it, like maybe the capitalists. Yeah, the capitalists won't like it, but I think the, like is, the capitalists will overall be okay with it. I want to know what the effects are. I think I'm going to put this in. I, I've, I've never implemented it, so I'm quite curious. I want to put it in just because I want to see. Um... This decreases capitalist income? Really? Right, because the capitalists are the people who own the buildings. Capitalists really don't like this. I wish you could see this screen before you implement it. Like I can tweak the numbers here. It's funny that like none, it still has an effect. I think I'm going to put this as low as possible. There's going to be some rent control, but as low as possible. It's probably actually a mistake. It doesn't sound like a very compatible policy, but I was, just, I was curious, goddammit. Um, yeah, we might... Do people want the, uh, the welfare? Uh, the fraud department? In chat? Let's see. <laughs> Get rid of the police department. I don't think so. Yeah, we've getting, we're getting some yeses for the, uh, the fraud department, so let's implement that. The poor don't like it, the conservatives like it a lot, the middle income like it. TV ad campaign for the welfare fraud, really? Undercover investigators. I don't think we're going to go crazy with it. I don't think we need a TV ad, but we'll put some press ads. Just sounds better. You know, the hotline might be fine, too. Oh, it actually tells us what the income will be. If we put it all the way down, the costs outweigh the income. If we put it all the way up, we actually make money. Well, the break-even point is, well, right where it is now, actually. It doesn't cost us anything. It just gets us some boost with middle-income people, which is good. Or we could max it all the way out, where it makes us a little bit of cash. With undercover investigators. There, let's do it. We gave people cheaper housing, but we have to make sure that they legitimately need their, uh, their welfare. Okay, next turn. Let's see what happens. If the global, global economy crashes, we're going to be in bad shape. GDP is dropping, which is unfortunate. Uncompetitive economy. That's really bad. You know why? It's because of these corporation taxes. We're just going to have to get rid of all corporation taxes. Debt protection law. Debt collection agencies have been in the news because of the aggressive methods they're using to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money. These debt collection agencies provide credit to people whom larger, more respectable companies will not lend money. A law is proposed to limit the ways in which such agencies can operate. Do we want to limit the agency activity? These agencies are preying on the weakest and poorest in our society, often tricking them into borrowing money at exorbitant rates that they can never be repaid. This is little more than extortion, and the government should act at once to limit severely the activities of these unscrupulous companies. So these sound like uh, check cashing places to me, right? Um, and then what's the, uh, the other side of the argument? Allow agencies to operate. Nobody forces people to borrow money they can't repay, and to restrict the rights of debt agencies to recover legitimate debts would be counterproductive. People need to learn to live within their means and not expect the state to bail them out of trouble if they cannot learn to do so. So, debt protection law. So, limit agencies or allow agencies create the link is there personally I think our position is gonna to be to allow them well that's that's what I believe it should be 
just based on everything that we're building up here in terms of our particular uh, role playing that we're doing. Allow agencies is easily winning this. Okay, we're going to allow that, which should make capitalists slightly more happy. Oops, where do we want to go? Not, yeah, actually, everyone is one to see what's affecting everyone. Tobacco tax. Everyone hates the tobacco tax? Really? I didn't realize we had so many smokers. So, corporate taxes. Right, we do have to do the healthcare and stuff too, but, you know, uncompetitive economy, that's, we don't want that. I mean, we could drop this, we could drop this all the way down to 1%, basically we'd have no effect whatsoever. Or we just cancel it outright. No more corporate taxes at all. Actually, canceling it would cost us 30. Bringing it down to 1% would only cost us 10 political capital. There would still be a token corporate tax, but there would be so many goddamn loopholes that it wouldn't actually matter. Technically, the capitalists would still be upset that it exists at all, but not much. Alright, I'm going to put it all the way down to 1%. There's going to be a token corporate tax, so I can claim that we're still taxing corporations, except we're not really doing it. Boom. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to uh, the health care. We did uh, lower that, right? Yes, we did. Um, capitalists, yeah, they're upset. They're cranky. Income tax, mostly. We'll see. But they also don't like the state health services, housing, pensions. So I think what we're going to do is cut back. Oh, we can't, right? Because I spent some political capital. Boo. Still got a long way to the next election, though. We don't have to worry too much about making everyone super duper happy. Um, Royal Strike is still happening. The poor are earning more, probably because of the housing, which actually improves uh, rail services overall, which is going to help decrease the earnings a little bit. Or no, it's the other way around. Poor earnings is actually lower, low enough that the rail strike is going up. Hmm, that's really annoying. I would really like this to be cancelled because I don't like the drain on the GDP. I mean, it's still down-ish. Yeah, organized crime thing is still happening. It is going down, not super strong. Um, we could cancel gambling. Because, yeah, the, it's it's kind of the opposite. I would like it if, like, legalized gambling would actually get rid of organized crime. Because who needs crime stuff? But I guess they run all the casinos. We could drop the gambling a little bit. To have an age limit and limited stakes. And technically, the gambling actually does help the GDP, though. And reduces unemployment, because I guess there's more gambling jobs. But I would really like to break the uh, organized crime syndicates. I think I might want to do this. Uh, I'm going to not do it right now. But that's definitely a possibility. It would also be quite nice to get rid of the alcohol abuse. We could boost the police. But I like, you know, small government. we got a $5.5 billion surplus, which is good. Against If we can continue to pay off our debt, we'll be in a good position. And debt is not... God, I talk about this every time. Countries actually, like, basically need debt to operate. It's, like, almost logically impossible not to have debt as a country. And debt is not bad. Having too much debt can be a problem. Um, but it's not quite as bad as people think it is. Legalized pro prostitution. It's a heart with a dollar. Really? All right. What are people saying? Free unlimited alcohol. No gambling. We're secret capitalists. All right, you know what? Maybe we'll just take a turn, and then we'll finally decrease the uh, the state health care a little bit. We're going to need a lot of political capital to get that sort of stuff going. Um, you know what? I'm actually in favor of banning public smoking here, uh, because it's yucky and disgusting. And it's not really all capitalistic -y, I think. It's more of a maybe a conservative liberal thing. Actually, is it even? It's kind of weird, because like, liberals don't want laws restricting their stuff. We're going to ban public smoking because it's yucky. Man, I'm so happy you can go into restaurants now and not have all your food taste like cigarettes. All right, public health care. Where are you? Here you are. State health services. So we're going to drop you slowly. Um, socialism population. That's really what we're looking to do. If we bring it down, less people will be socialists. 
and we're going to save a lot of money. But what needs to happen is you can't go too fast because you've got to give private health care a chance to catch up. If I just cut all state health services, there will be no health services at all. So I'm going to put it down by a full slider here. So instead of any prevention, we're just going to go serious illnesses only. Which is stupid. One of the reasons I think that Canada actually has far less health care costs and a greater life expectancy than America is because the state health services really does do a lot of like preventative stuff. Alright, I'm going to apply these changes. Boom. And... Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for state pensions. Okay, we can't drop them yet. Where are state pensions then? Right here? Ah, oh, that's no, private pensions. But yeah, state pensions. Okay. Nice crime going down ever so slightly. Right, alcoholism. Uh, asthma technically is going down. I don't know why. Not doing much for it. What are we going to do? Uh, the corporate taxes are down. Oh, we're now running a deficit. Wait, what? <laughs> that was a hell of a drop. The economy is getting worse, that's for sure. Um, income dropped, yeah, because of the corporate taxes. And the GDP. Still, I think we're going to be okay overall, because... Our uncompetitive economy is dropping dramatically because we no longer have corporate income tax. So I think this will go away, which will help a lot. I think I'm going to leave it as is. We're not going to spend too much more political capital now. We may have to screw with state pensions. Okay, GDP has dropped even further. Oof. Traffic congestion is a little bit annoying. Um, I think it's just the world economy. That's it. I'm just going to blame the world economy. This is easy. I'm super good at being a uh, at, at being a, a politician. Look at that global economy. That's what's screwing us up there. Although our relative GDP is also doing fairly poor. That's okay. We'll have to do a little bit of deficit spending. Uh, our oil pipeline was attacked. No, in a neighboring country, a an oil pipeline was attacked. Other nations look like they will be stockpiling oil as a result to insulate themselves against the effects of repeated attacks. And as a result, supply of oil has been fall has fallen may take a while to recover. We've got less oil supply, and our patriots are unhappy. Oil supply has dropped. So this will probably drive up oil prices, which is not good. We could see if we could do something to drop oil demand, which is mostly tied to car usage. Car usage is very high and also has health effects. I'm not sure what I want to do about that. Uh, we could institute a petrol tax, which doesn't feel very libertarian-ish kind of thing. We just cut back on road building. Less roads. Pisses off the motorists. Decreases car usage, but will increase traffic congestion. Which is not great either, because that has a drain on our GDP. Drug addiction? No! Oh no, you guys! How, what did we possibly do that could have led to drug addiction? Oh, is it because we uh, legalized LSD, perhaps? I think so. Also, we cut back on state health services. So we have a drug addiction problem. Parents are not happy. Productivity is dropping dramatically because of this. I think we've got to... Uh, I think we're going to have to reverse our position on our uh, narcotics here. We might just have to ban them. Fix this right away. government provides LSD. There might be another policy we can put in. Transportation. See, some of these could help. We could implement uh, fuel efficiency standards. Doesn't cost as much, um, but would help cut down on the amount of oil used, which I think is probably a good idea, actually. Um, we can release tasers, police drones, <laughs> racial profiling. Um, none of these are really going to help with the, uh, the drug enforcement stuff. Uh, public services, there might be stuff here. Healthcare vouchers is a good way to balance um, 
when you cut back on state health services. Do, do, do. Technology colleges could be handy. Can we implement a drug tax? That's what we should do. Recreational drug tax! Oh, that's great! Let's put that in. Listen, the drugs can be legal, but we're going to tax it. A lot. The youth hate it, the poor hate it. Poverty will go up. <laughs> I like it. That's legalize the drugs, get people addicted to the drugs, and then tax the drugs. Oh my god, this is the greatest money-making scheme I've ever come up with. Maximum drug tax. Alright, we're about a third, or maybe a quarter of our way through our term. Popularity is going up overall. I think we're going to be able to get reelected. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, let's get back on our pensions a little. You gotta save some money, after all. Alright, just, just a little bit, because we want to encourage people to start taking up uh, private pensions instead. Because we do have some, but not much. We really want more people to move in there. And it takes time for all that to kick in. Alright, let's go to the next turn and see what happens. We got a credit rating downgrade. Yeah, our GDP is bad, and that's actually going to make it worse. We're now triple B instead of double A. Health is just... <laughs> zero. Our health is now zero. Uh, pollution, alcohol abuse, drug addiction, obesity. It's all working against us. And dropping our productivity even more. I'm not sure that this form of government is working out for us. Uh, we've also got the crazy working week, mostly because of our terrible labor laws. I was really hoping to break that la that rail strike, though. There we go. Although, once the, the rail strike gets broken, I'm actually just going to cancel rail subsidies. <laughs> and things are going to get worse for everyone. Uh, unemployment is going up. Crime is the same. Poverty is going up. Listen, it's fine. It's fine. We could, I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Technology grants. Technology levels are continuing to go up, which is really, really good. Um, could even increase our science funding a little bit, but I don't think that's a great idea. Energy efficiency is good. This is still taking a while to implement. That's part of it. Because when you do something at science funding, it takes four turns before it really kicks in fully. So it's giving us a preview of what it will be, but it's not all the way there yet. And that's true with a lot of the things that we've put into play. Um... They just haven't all kicked in. Like the state health services is still dropping. The, some of the health benefits are already gone, but like we haven't gotten rid of the uh, the debuff on private health care, for example. So right now we're just in a really crappy place overall. We've got a $12 billion deficit. I still blame the world economy. Clearly the problem is we have to cut back even more. Um, what are we going to cut to save money on? School buses? We could implement more road tolls. That seems foolish. We cut all those rail subsidies. Oh, we'll be able to do that next turn. Absolutely, we can do that next turn. Legal drug consumption just drop dramatically when we introduce those taxes. That's good. Can we break the, uh, the drug addiction? <laughs> I don't know if I want to do anything this turn. Can we implement something interesting? Space program. Tax shelters. That's the problem. We don't have enough tax shelters. Start drilling for oil. I know what'll make a difference. Plastic bag taxes. Health food subsidies are pretty cheap. Flat income tax. Mm -hmm. Price investment scheme. I love the fact that it's got scheme in the title. Gives tax breaks to wealthy individuals who invest their money in small startup companies which are based in this country. The scheme encourages investment in companies which should eventually grow and stimulate the economy, at the same time giving a popular tax break to people who invest in them. 
Obviously, indirectly, the scheme is being subsidized by those without savings to invest. It might not be bad. What are people thinking? Small business grants, tax shelters, prison labor. I don't think there is an option of doing that. Nope. Internet censorship. Let me turn up the uh, the Moobot settings just to make people uh, think it's even uh, it's it's so much more realistic. So what do we people want? Just be popular, do what the people want. Tech up. Yeah, people are fat. Let's put in a junk food tax. All the way. Well, that will dramatically cut back on obesity. Hurts poor earnings some more, but really, you know, why don't the poor just buy more money? <laughs> um, we'll leave it in the middle. It does boost health quite a bit, actually. You know what? All the way. Full junk food tax. Screw those people. And uh, while subsidies don't sound like the sort of thing I would normally do, it's relatively cheap to put in the health food subsidies. We could do both. I think one is enough. I think I'm actually going to hold off on doing too, too much else, actually. Um, just because I want to limit how much, uh, how much money we spend. Now, one of the things we could do is we really could, especially since we're not necessarily courting the religious people. Um, what, how, what is the status? We could go more evolution-y. Um, what does that do for us? Doesn't have a direct connection to anything technological? I thought it did. I guess not. Science funding is finally starting to kick in. Still quite expensive, though. Poor earnings. Currency strength, yeah, because of our weak, weak, weak GDP. Which is mostly due to productivity, a little bit of crime. And this damn uncompetitive economy. Which is really bad. We need to boost productivity. Uh, should we cancel maternity leave? Well, the health is a big problem. And the health is going to improve because of our um, junk food tax. Pollution is a big problem there. The drug addiction. God, who decided to do all this? I think I'm going to outlaw drugs. I think we've got to. This was a mistake. It was a huge mistake. Well, actually... Oh, yeah. Right. It was to fight organized crime. Has the organized crime gone away yet? No, it's not even close. God damn it. want drugs. We could just go back to cannabis by itself. Ah, we'll leave it there. People voted for it. What can I say? Maybe next term we'll change it. I, we may not have anything else to do. Homelessness is on the rise. Um, yeah, which makes sense because we keep cutting back on things. Speaking of that, let's cut back on some more <laughs> some more housing. Oh, man. we got to save a little bit of money. Less state housing. Just, just by a nudge here. And we'll have the uh, the private housing eventually kick in and help. This takes a long time to change, though. It's going to mean more homelessness, which is probably going to mean more crime. If they're homeless, why don't they just buy a house? I don't understand the problem. Poverty's going up. Education's pretty good. Actually. Did we ever cut back on state schools? I don't think so. I think we're going to want to do that. We're going to want more private schools. Again, by another sort of notch like this. Children's food. Law has been proposed to regulate the fat content and nutritional value of food sold to children, including food sold in fast food restaurants and, of course, food served in schools. It's likely to incur costs for the food retailers. Leave law unchanged. You cannot interfere with the free market, the state interfering with people's lives. If kids want to eat fatty junk food and the parents don't mind, then who are politicians to tell people not to eat hamburgers? 
Otherwise, obesity is a major problem, which is severe impact on people's health, marketing, unhealthy food to people at such an early age is unacceptable, and we should pass a law now to safeguard the future health of our citizens. Now, there's certainly the problem that we have really poor health overall and an obesity problem. So I'm tempted to regulate the children's food. But it also goes a little bit against us. This seems like a good time for another straw poll. Stop kids being fat? Yes. Stop. No. Be fat. From a game's point of view, what you should what we should do is stop them from being fat. From the politics that we're doing, the no be fat might be the way we want to go. I don't know. It's kind of it's sort of anti-free market capitalism by, you know, discouraging this, I guess. Oh, that's mostly a school thing, right? This wasn't an overall ban. Oh, it was to regulate, oh yeah, food sold to children, like specifically marketed to children in fast food restaurants, so you know, the children's happy meals and school stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have them stop be fat. So regulate children's food. All right, so obesity will drop over time. It will take a while for this to kick in, but I think it'll help. Uh, health is not quite as bad as it was, although it's still pretty goddamn bad. How have we not broken this damn thing yet? I could kick up the rail subsidies ever so slightly, just enough to break the strike. Because what I'm looking for is to have these just dip below this and then never go back up to the top again. It's, just, it's such a drag right now. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to bump up the rail subsidies just enough to get that to break. It's not going to take much. Just something like that. And then we'll probably turn around and just cancel the rail subsidies outright. Although it does help with the poor a little bit. All right, next turn, let's see what happens. Global forecast is still going to crap. And that's that's the biggest part of the problem. We've got a stress epidemic. Our businesses are working people too hard. Yeah, that's because of our power labor labor laws. We've got a working week that's just too much. Our polls have actually dropped. Health is going up a little bit. Credit's still not doing great. But no one's trying to assassinate us yet, so I guess that's something. Ugh, how did that not go? God damn it. Homelessness is a major, major problem. Obesity is dropping. It's dropping faster than a fat guy on a bungee cord. Drug addiction is still an issue. But that's good. Productivity went up slightly and should improve a little bit more. Um, damn labor laws. $10 billion deficit. All right. Oh, one of our ministers is very unhappy. Uh, corp, religious people and conservatives. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to shuffle the cabinet. Rail strike has finally ended. Freedom of Information Act. Now there's an interesting question and very relevant to the uh, internet peoples. Freedom of Information Act, do we hide things or not? Because by uh, not allowing this, you actually protect yourself a little bit more against terrorism. But you kind of end up with a totally dickish government. So, you know, freedom of information, yes, no. In terms of how our government runs, I think you could easily go either way. I don't think there's a role-playing answer. People obviously want freedom of information, so we will accept that. All right, we are going to shuffle our cabinet since we have some disloyal people in there. Well, mostly just this one person. She's not super happy to, but uh, I don't think we need to do a full shuffle. We're just going to uh, fire the one welfare minister. She's not happy because the religious people and conservatives aren't happy. And we will hire someone new. And usually just look for very high political capital people because that usually means they have great experience, they'd be good in a job. But, like, this is trade unionist socialist? No, that's not going to work out for us. Although, okay, there is... Actually, the socialists like us quite a bit, still. How the hell do they still like us? 
Well, it helps that we have so many ministers that are sympathetic. Um, and actually, we might want to continue doing that then. We have so many ministers that will constantly talk about how important socialist stuff is. They're part of our secret capitalist cabinet, right? They hide the fact that we're slowly screwing over all the capitalists. Or all the socialists. I like it. 